Hi everyone, this is Dr. Palacios and I'm here to bring you another topic regarding migraine headaches. Now today's topic is going to be about how to keep track of your migraines, your headaches, and even some type of pain that you may be wondering how to tell others about it. And I'll get to that in a bit. But first we wanna go over the comment and the question that involves this topic. So here it is. How do people maintain a journal when they have a migraine? I can even dial a phone for help or call in sick. And it is true. There are people who get migraines that get them so severe and so intense that they're unable to actually do anything other than close their eyes, hide themselves in darkness and wait to get over the pain. Now, there are three things that I want to go over today because this brings the topic of what it's like to journal your migraines, headaches, and other types of pain. Now, when I mean other types of pain, there are situations where you don't have much of an idea or a reason why you get a certain kind of pain. So this way is going to help you keep track of that so a doctor or a specialist can see it and maybe make some sense of what kind of pain it is. It doesn't have to be just headaches, but for the context of this video, I'm going to be presenting it on migraines, headaches. Now, three things to keep in mind why journaling is a good thing. Reason number one, it keeps track of your migraine episodes, severity and duration, so your doctor knows how to help you and find better treatments for you. Going with that, reason two, we got to understand how to keep track of your medicines and which ones work and which ones don't work. Not one therapy is going to work for all of them. So journaling is going to help you keep track of that. And the third reason that you want to journal and keep track of your migraine headaches is to have a case in case you ever go in short-term or long-term disability benefits. Well, at least to help you build a strong case, journaling is a foundation because it's written and it's evidence and it's basically all of your experiences with how severe your migraines can get. Now, two other things is type of journals and what are some things you do want to journal? Now, when it comes to migraine tracker, which one is best, which one is not the best and so on, I don't necessarily have a preference. As long as you can use an app, you can use an from Android or iPhone, you can use a paid or unpaid, it doesn't really matter. Or you can simply use a written journal or for me, just a little paper. But it is nice to just have kind of like a notebook where you can keep track of all your uh, personal experiences and just for journaling purposes. Now, don't do it from memory. It's important that if you're going to tell somebody about your headache experiences, if especially a doctor or a lawyer, if you ever wanna to get to a point of a case, you don't wanna recall your headache experiences through memory. Now, the last thing about journaling are 10 things that I want you to keep track and which, which are basically questions that I want you to write down whenever you are journaling a migraine, headache, or pain episode. So these 10 things are gonna go through them here, but they're written in the description. So please feel free to take them and apply it to yourself if you think this could help you out. So number one, always write down when it started and when it ended. When did the headache begin? and try to be as specific as you can. If it is a morning, try to be specific around which hour. You don't have to get to the minute and second, but roughly in the hour can help. And then when did it end? What was the date? And then the time as well. Uh, number two, any warning signs before the headache. If you have for people who have migraines and they have auras, sometimes they get those symptoms like flashes of light, or hearing things, smelling things. Those are some 
type of prodromes or pre-headache warnings. And also, while you have the headache or attack of pain episode, record what's, what other symptoms did you get besides the headache? Did you get nausea? Did you have to throw up? Did your eyes start getting red or swelling? So those are important things to keep in mind. Uh, number three, where is the pain located mostly? Was it here? Was it here? Was it on the back of the head? You don't have to be specific to where, but at least point it out and it does help. Uh, number four, how would you describe the pain? Again, you can say it like it was throbbing or it was piercing, it felt like needles or it was like pressing. But also if you wanna use metaphors, like for example, somebody was like hitting me on the head with a hammer, that's fine too. Again, the more descriptive you can be, the more others will be able to understand how it feels. Number five, how bad was it? So from a scale of one to 10, one being no pain to 10 being like, this is the worst pain that I had in my life. Try to see which one, which number fits best in your migraine or headache episode. Number six, what treatment options did you take or do? Which means what medications were you taking? Did you do anything else to try it? Maybe you try some natural things like some people do essential oils around their temples and see, did it do anything? Did it not? Or how did, did it work for you? Number seven, what did you eat before the headache? And this is very important because there are sometimes little triggers or big triggers that can lead a cascade of events that can lead to a migraine. And if you have an ethnic background where eating a lot of spices is common, also try to keep, try to write that down. Like which, if you can't obviously tell all the spices, at least tell the kind of dish that you have. So we kind of have an idea as doctors, what kind of spices were in that. Because the spices, some spices can trigger migraine headaches. Then number eight, how did you sleep the night before the headache? Did you sleep well? Were you resting? Did you toss around a lot? Did you wake up in the middle of the night? Those are important questions to know. Number nine, what kind of activities did you do before the headache? So were you running? Were you watching TV? Were you fixing things at home? So what were you doing before the headache happened? And then last, num last question is, did you have important events or stressful moments in that day? And that's from stress from work, personal things, um, things that happen to us that we are, we just feel unpleasant with. But then on the other hand, you have the good stress, which is, they call it you stress or true stress. And those are like good events. Like for example, going to a wedding or getting married or having to go to a date. Like, even though those are good times, there's still some stress in it because, you know, you want to look yourself um, appropriate, professional, or um, at least approachable if you are going on a date. So did that, did you have any of that? Did you have any kind of stress during that timeline? And that's it. If you're able to answer these 10 questions, it's a great way to start a pain migraine or headache journal. Whatever kind it is, wherever you want to write it or record it, it's going to help you in the long run because it is said that after a month of doing it, let's say you have seven migraines in a month, after the end of that month, after you wrote down everything, you should be able to see a pattern. You will understand and become aware of, the own, of your own pattern. The, and the best way to do that is by recording and show the evidence that this is something not, this isn't something that we're making up. This is something that is true and it's affecting my daily life. And I hope you can help me with that. Knowing our suffering ourselves can help us express it so others can be aware of it. 
even create support groups, and therefore help each other out that way, professional and non-professional. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to work together and address the root causes of your migraines, please click on my bio link below. And we can also find alternative ways to your migraines and other conditions as well. And it's all at the comfort of your home. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.